Hello, everyone. My name is Professor Maloney, and I'm um, your instructor for the CGS 1060C-2217-2171 Introduction to Computers class. Um, so this class is being run using the MDC Live modality. Okay. Um, hopefully you know what that means. But basically, you won't see me in the computer labs. You won't see me, um, you know, face to face. You're going to see me remotely through Collaborate Ultra video sessions, live sessions, uh, video recordings, things like that. Okay. Uh, in this class, you are required to attend two class sessions a week every Monday and every Wednesday from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Okay. And then from 8 a.m. until 8.40 a.m., I will still be online in a live fashion in an optional live office hour session. So basically, as your schedule shows, you have class Monday, Wednesday from 7 a.m. until 8.40 a.m., and you have access to me for that entire hour and 40 minutes. For about one hour, I'll either be talking about things, talking about how, you know, what's coming up next or what you did the previous week, what you have to do the coming week, uh, perhaps teaching you things in terms of actually demonstrating, um, showing you what you have to do on the, on the class websites. Um, you know, in addition to Blackboard, you have to be on this Cengage we uh, MindTap website where there's lots and lots of activities. In fact, you're going to be doing 17 different training activities, um, nine different projects, um, 16, 16 different practice exams if you want to do them, but I highly recommend that you do, and five real exams. Also, five quizzes, and I mean, that's a lot of stuff. For sure, it's a lot of stuff. So you have a full class. Uh, full term, but you won't have to be coming to the physical classroom. However, you must be online from 7 a.m. till 8 a.m. and checked in to my uh, required live class sessions in Collaborate Ultra. And I'm going to show you where the link to that is in Blackboard um, as part of this session. So what is today? Today's session is just a class overview a syllabus overview, a blackboard overview, just to sort of get you up to speed on what's happening in this class, all right? I wanted you to see me, so voila. I hope you um, enjoy the class. I hope you work hard. You know, this class, uh, you know, it's easy to make an A. It's easy to make an A. Probably half of you will make an A. Probably, and that's a pretty darn big percentage, probably bigger than a uh, bigger percentage of A grades than most classes. But I also, though, probably will get two Fs, two or three Ds, three or four Cs. So I get about 10 students that either make a C or worse, and I don't consider that good, and probably about seven or eight of you make a B, and then, like I said, half the class, if it's 30 students, that, about, that means about 15 of you, 14 or 15 or so, will make A's. All right? Now, of course, to do all this, you have to follow the trends. And that's the way my classes have worked for years. Um, so I hope each of you can make an A. I have no rules about you know, uh, limiting the number of A grades to 10 or 6 or 2 or whatever. You know, in the old days when I went to school, we had what we called a bell curve. A bell curve would be like this. It'd go this way and up dramatically and then down and then like that. And basically what it means is the, the first part would be the A's and then a little above that for B's and then way above that a bunch, that's for the C's, and then down lower again for the D's and lower again for the F's. So that would be a traditional bell curve, okay? means not too much activity on the outsides a bunch of activities in the middle. But like I said, I, I just gave you basically my, um, my class grade averages, probably over the X number of years. Um, so people do fail my classes, definitely. People do make Ds in my classes, for sure. Um, but there's no reason to. If you do what I ask you to do, you will not. All right? Okay, so now I'm going to not show my face anymore, and I shall go over and share my screen. So share screen, and 
now in a few seconds you'll see my computer screen all right all right so now in blackboard so let me go to your view first so this is your view this is exactly what you see in the class in blackboard right so home page the home page basically you don't really need to go there for too much in my class um, the only thing that I'll put in here are announcements. I'll post an announcement before the class begins, meaning before the day that you're actually listening to this, because you'll be hearing this in class on Monday, um, August 23rd, the first day of class. Uh, but probably on the Saturday or Sunday, maybe even the Friday before Monday, um, meaning about Friday the 20th, or Saturday the 21st, you'll get an email from me, and you'll also see a course announcement telling you what this class is all about and letting you know that you must attend my two synchronous, synchronous means a specific day and time, um, my two specific um, class sessions each week so that you're aware that you must be in my class. You miss three sessions, three sessions, the entire term, I reserve the right to drop you. And if your grade is not good, meaning if you're in the C, D, or F category, I'm very likely going to drop you. If you're, because it tells me you're not, you don't care. I only want students to make A's. You know, that's the bottom line. There's no reason not to make an A in this kind of class as long as you work hard, all right? So anyway, this is where announcements go. The next one, syllabus and schedule of activities. Now this one you can download as a Word document. So you just click this link here, right? CGS 1060C 2217 underscore 2171. This is your, Syllabus, but I also put it here. Okay, a syllabus and a schedule of activities. The schedule of activities is at the end of the syllabus, and it's this thing here is just copying and pasting the entire syllabus into this document here. All right, so it's the same thing. All right, okay, so let's see what I'm saying. So you know the name of the class, okay, um, and the reference number for the class. Now, I again, I'm Professor Maloney. It's at MW, that means Monday, Wednesday, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., MDC Live, online, synchronous, remote. So this is a required, right? So required live class sessions each Monday and Wednesday from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. starting Monday, August 23rd, which is the first day of class. So you must be here until 8 a.m., right? Then from 8 a.m. until 8.40 a.m., I have optional live office hour sessions. So the optional office hour sessions are for, you know, you have a question about your grade, or you have a question about a due date, or you have a question about something you see in the syllabus that doesn't make sense, or you have a question about uh, a training activity. You have to do tra 17 training activities, I said, in this class. Um, if you have any questions about the trainings, I'll be glad to help. All you have to do is attend my optional sessions and ask a question, and I will help you. Uh, also demonstrate, I'm going to have a video recording though, showing you how easy those uh, trainings are to do because we have one version where you can play back something to, to see if you don't know how to do it by yourself. And then we have another one where it's uh, full of pop-ups and the same stuff about telling you what to do. And then thirdly, there's an apply and you must do the apply to get credit for the activities. And um, there are many, many activities. There's literally four modules in Word, four in Excel, four in Microsoft Access, and four in Microsoft PowerPoint that are trainings that you must do. So four fours are 16. And each of those office applications, Word, Excel, Access, and PowerPoint, you'll have exams on. There's also an exam on Windows 10. That'll be your first exam. But Windows 10 only has one training. So one training basically for one exam. That's a great opportunity to make a 100, get this, the, term, the term off to a good start, okay? Anyway, so that's what this is just telling you that. So 7 to 8 a.m. every Monday, every Wednesday required. The only Monday that you don't have class is Monday, September the 6th. That's Labor Day. So that is a off day for you. Every other Monday and Wednesday, you must be in the class from 7 until 8, okay? Your five exams are all done during the optional, uh, sorry, during the required 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. classes as well. You'll know them by looking at the schedule of activities, which I'm going to show you in a little while, um, telling you which day and what times you can do those exams. And by the way, I watch you do those exams. I'll be in MindTap 
and I'll be clicking on the exams and I'll know when you start at the exam, I'll know when you finish the exam, I'll know what you're doing on the exams, okay? So make sure that you're here on time um, to do those. So five of these required sessions will be you doing exams, the other 26, 27, however many there are, um, will be me demonstrating things, me talking about things, and once we get to the middle part of the class, it'll just be me saying over and over again, you know, if you haven't done this work, do it now. I'll be reviewing who's done what, okay? All right, and then the optional um, office hour session, again, is from 8 to 8.40, all right? Again, on Monday and Wednesday. Okay, so um, due to COVID-19, again, this is being run in the MDC live modality. That just means you're not seeing me in person in a classroom, but MDC Live requires you to be in synchronous, and synchronous means certain day, certain time. And again, I've already told you the certain days are Monday and Wednesday. The certain times are 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. You can get in as early as 6.45. You must be in by 7 a.m., okay? In this class, and by the way, I've been at MDC for about 11 years. That's not you know, a ton of years, especially considering, you know, I'm an older man, but uh, 11 years, and I have probably never, as in never, been late to work. Every term, students come late to my classes, and I do not like that. So that's another reason why I reserve the right to drop anybody who misses three of my classes. If you come in late consistently, I'll also drop you. You come to class at 7 a.m., You'll get out of class at 8 a.m. On the days of the exams, you may be in the class a little bit longer. And then again, optionally, you can stay and talk to me from 8 to 8.40. If you have questions about your grades, questions about assignments, questions about what's coming up next, you know, that kind of stuff. All right? Okay. And how do you access them? You click the required live Collaborate Ultras link in the course menu. That means the left side of the menu in, um, in Blackboard, like right over here, you see Required Live Collaborate Ultra Sessions. That's where you go to listen to my lectures and to my, you know, my discussions on Monday and Wednesday mornings from 7 until 8 a.m. Okay, so that's that. Letter to the students, you can read that, okay? Uh, course description, you can read that. Required text and materials, you do need, you do absolutely need to purchase your Cengage MindTap access code for this course. 98% of your class grade, 98%, comes from Cengage MindTap. It's basically a big website that I have created. It's on the Cengage MindTap platform, and I have all your assignments over there, practice exams over there, um, exams over there quizzes over there, everything for this class is over there except for your bio post, which is worth 2% of your grade, all right? All right, so here's how you buy your book, uh, your required text. I say text of materials, it's really an ebook, but again, the main thing is it's called an access code. It costs about $86.75 for the access code, all right? So here's your options. You have to buy it from our bookstore, bookstore meaning the Homestead Campus bookstore, all right? So you have to do it there. I recommend that you go to the bookstore, okay? The, if you go to the bookstore, you will actually get that thing, and you will, um, um, they'll physically give it to you when you pay for it. So you'll have your access code, then you just go home or go to the library or go anywhere, you know, go to one of the computer labs at the Homestead campus, wherever you can use a computer, and register your course following instructions that, I'm, that I will be giving you in each of the first two classes, uh, class days, meaning Monday and Wednesday of week one, okay? Um, you can copy this link here if you want to, so I'll just say copy it and go here to show you what it does. This is gonna bring you up to the Homestead Bookstore, and you see it's positioned for this particular class, okay? So this is where you go if you wanna buy it online. This is their website, uh, the, the MDC Campus Bookstore's website, and it's run by a company called Follett. Okay, Follett runs it for us, but it's our website. Okay, all right. So that's how much it costs, and that's what you can do there. Alternatively, and preferably, I would rather you buy it. So it's recommended that you go to the bookstore, because if you go to the bookstore, you get the access code immediately. If instead you, oops, if instead you use that link that I just said. 
Uh, shoot, when I'm in the preview, I got to get out of that. Let's see. I'm just at the back here this way for now. Um, so anyway, uh, if you go to the, if you get it via the bookstore, they mail via the postal service your access code to you, which means you don't get it for about a week. Okay. So please, it's the same price on their on-site uh, online website bookstore, meaning this link, or going physically to the Homestead Campus bookstore. It's the same price, so it's better to get it at the bookstore because then you get to bring it home with you the same day. Now, on the website, once you buy it, I mean, if you do do that uh, approach, there is an option for you to tell them that you want to pick it up, but it still takes more days than if you just you know buy it in the bookstore and in addition to the receipt, they actually give you your access code and you bring it home and you register. Okay, so that's the preferred uh, preferred approach. Okay, um, your grade. So your bio post is done in Blackboard. It's two percent of your grade. Send gauge training, fifteen percent of your grade. Send gauge concepts quizzes. There's five quizzes. You get to do each one two times. By the way, five percent of your grade. Send gauge projects. There's nine projects. By the way, you can see it's a big part of your grade. Twenty eight percent. And you get to submit each project three times. So there's no reason not to get an A out of that part of the class. Same with training. Remember I said training? There's an apply mode, which you must do, but there's also a practice and um, maybe observe or something. There's two other modes where they'll tell you. They're showing you what to do. So it's pretty easy to get a good grade. The quizzes, since you get to do them twice each, that, that should be good for you to get a, you know, a, a good grade. So then the biggest part of the grade, though, your exams, Five of them, one on Windows 10, one on Microsoft Word, one on Excel, one on Microsoft Access, one on PowerPoint. So five exams worth 50% of your grade, it's 10% each. Okay, so this is the biggest part of your grade. These you only get to take one time each, all right? Okay, so you can read all this. Now, you'll hear me say over and over, though, if you miss an exam, and that's the same thing if you also don't submit an assignment, by the due date, you'll get a 20% late penalty on everything and anything that you make up if you ask to make it up. And if you don't ask to make it up within the first week, you don't get to make it up. So imagine you get 100 on an exam. Well, let's say one person gets 100 on, on the first exam, Windows 10. We'll say another person misses that day. And then they realize, oh, shoot, I missed the exam, professor. I need to make it up. So, yeah, you need to make it up. Guess what? There's a 20% late penalty now. Oh, really? Can I? Uh, no, no. That's what my syllabus says. That's the rule. But you said half the students will make it. Yeah, half the students are good. They know what they're doing. So make sure you take every exam on the exam date. If you can't take it on that day, something pops up, you notify me immediately and take the exam early. You can't take it late, even if you're in the hospital. That's not an excuse. You have to take the exam on the, on the assigned date, or there's a 20% penalty. Okay? Every uh, uh, exam date is listed on the back of my syllabus, which again, I'm going to get to when I keep scrolling down here. And same with every other assignment. Okay, But if you don't do them on the right date, or dates, because in the case of uh, your trainings, your, your projects, you get literally up to three weeks for some of them, up to one week for others of them. So you get quite a bit of time. And on the quizzes, the five quizzes you have to do, you get about a week to do them. So it's not just a matter of saying, well, yeah, but I, I just missed one day. I don't care what you missed. You don't miss any days. First of all, you shouldn't anyway. But if you don't do it by the due date, there's 20% late penalty. No excuses. Okay? I understand that. All right. So, um, on your syllabus, oh, sorry, on your schedule, you're going to see this uh, lab component written as part of the class. The lab just means that you're not going to be able to finish all the work you have to do in this class on Monday and Wednesday between 7 and 8 a.m. That's physically, physically impossible. You need probably 10 hours a week if you're a normal student in this class. So Monday and Wednesday, one hour times two is two hours. You need at least another eight hours a week. If you're working during the office hour session, then you've gained another hour and 20. So you've got now about six hours and 40 minutes minimum to go to do all the work you need to do and to do well on everything. Okay. So make sure you understand that there's a lot to do. But anyway, when they say lab time on the schedule and it says TBA, which means to be announced, 
It just means any work you don't finish in the live class schedule, you know, you have to do, you have seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You decide when you do things, but based on the schedule at the end of this syllabus, okay? All right. So now another thing is that you're being trained on Office 365, which is basically Office 2019, okay? You can download this. If you do not have this version of Office, whether you have a Mac or you have a Windows machine, whether you're using, you know, your, your iPad, you're using a tablet, doesn't matter what you're using, but you can download this software from a link in the library, and I'll show you that link after a while as well, uh, so that you have the current version of Office, which will help you get the best grades on your projects, okay? All right. Um, for those of you that need help in this class, so I think I mentioned um, in the video so far that um, if you have questions on training, I will help you on the trainings. I mean, during class, you can ask a question when it's a quiet time. Otherwise, you can go to the office hour session and say, Professor, I have a question on um, the Word Module 3, Task 10, or whatever. And I'll say, sit down. And I'll pull it up and make sure that you understand how to do it. Okay? But you, the bigger part of your grade, remember, are projects and exams. Projects 28%, exams 50%. Training is only 15%. So even though I help you on that, that's not as good of a uh, that's not as big of a grade as the projects. Projects are based on the trainings. So the way the class is set up is you do the trainings, then you do the projects, then you do practice exams. They're ungraded. They're called practice, and then you do the real exams. You get whatever length of time you'll see at the end of the syllabus, uh, uh, you know, the schedule of activities for that, all right? 98% of your class grade, as I mentioned, comes from the assignments at Cengage MindTap. So you must get that access code within the first week of class. Uh, CGS study groups are, I just have a link set up in the discussion forums in Blackboard. And basically, I just encourage you guys, I don't monitor that, but if you guys click there, you can then create a post. Hey, does anyone know how to do... Um, or can anyone help me on Excel? Or can anyone help me on Access? Or, you know, whatever. You guys can talk. I don't monitor that, so you can do whatever you want to do in there in terms of helping each other if you want to, all right? But your exams, like I said, I'm in that room. I see the exams. Things happen. you got to do your work, and it has to be your own work. And also projects, by the way. If someone says, hey, you can, you know, for a dollar, you can have my word project too, and just make sure you change my name to your name on it, and the person says, oh, sure, I'll do that. I'll even give you $2. Well, bottom line is there's an embedded course key, uh, embedded student ID key in that document. Embedded means you don't see it. It's encrypted. And it will show up on my end, though. And two students, there will be a little thing saying this person's work here was done by this person here. And both will get zeros. I promise you that. I don't mind you guys working together. But working together still means everyone has to do their own work, all right? Okay, attendance, I told you, if you miss three of my required class sessions, I reserve the right to drop you, all right? You must also, if you, want, if you don't want to be dropped, logged into the Cengage MindTap class website every week, and you must complete all the work. Every week there's going to be training. Every week there's going to be projects. Every week there will be practice exams. And every week there will be final exams for the most part, okay, for the most part. Right. And again, I drop you if I feel I need to. All right. So that stuff is there. Um, do, 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 do. This is just saying you've, if you have any questions about submitting your work or if you have any questions about your class grade, obviously just come to your office hour session with me and I'll help you. All right. If you want to drop this class uh, with a full refund, you must do it the, by the end of the first week, meaning the first week starts on the 23rd. On the 27th, which is Friday of week one, you must drop the class if you want to get a full refund. If you don't do that, and then let's say sometime in late September, you say, you know what, I really don't like this class. Professor said you can make an A on it, but I'm struggling, um, and I feel like I need to drop it now. So if you drop it, then you can. You get what's called a W uh, if you drop it after the full refund date versus the last day to drop the class is Monday, November the 1st, 
So anytime in September or October, you can still drop the class, but you get a W, okay? If you suddenly have a bad life event, I mean, and I obviously don't wish this on anyone, but if something happens in your life and it's really serious, if you're passing the class, you can request to do an incomplete. Only if you're passing the class. Passing means a C, B, or A grade, and it's before November the 1st. It's after the drop date, obviously. And then um, we can talk about whether it's possible or not. All right? Okay, so you read the rest of this. You read all these course competencies. And now I'll get to the schedule of activities. So down here, and again, this is if you download the document too to your computer. The last couple pages of my syllabus is a tentative tentative assignment schedule that means it's that changes may occur but I do this a lot and I don't have a whole lot of changes I try to make sure that everything is accurate all right but obviously I'm planning 16 weeks in advance so your bio post is due August the 29th that's the Sunday after the first week ends okay then you have send gauge computing concepts modules one through five quizzes they're all due September the 10th right? September the 10th is a Friday. It's the only Friday due date except for PowerPoint on this particular day here, all right? So that assignment of those five quizzes, and that's 5% of your class grade, the bio post is 2% of your class grade. So you have 7% of your class grade done by September the 10th. That's all, okay? Then you have Windows 10 training, which is available the day before, the class day before this one. So it's available on the 8th of September, and it's due on the 14th of September. And here's where I put the first exam. And now, I remember that I mentioned, you can look here for your exam. So it says, week four, day one, Windows 10 exam at Cengage. Required to be done during the required live class hours on Wednesday, September 15th, from 7 a.m. to 8.40 a.m. Now note, remember I said required is 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. But let's say you get to class at 7.15 that day as opposed to 7. You get a total of 70 minutes for the exam, okay? But only if you start it by 7.30. The 7.30 plus 70 minutes is 8.40. At 8.40 a.m., the exam will turn off. Or it will tell you, if you don't turn it off, you're automatically going to get a 20% late penalty. Because the late penalty also applies not just if you don't take the exam, but if you come in late and try to take it and try to squeeze it in, yeah, it'll let you do it, but you're gonna get a 20% penalty, all right? So anyway, Wednesday, September the 15th at 7 a.m. is when you should be here to take the Windows 10 exam. Most of you will be done with it by 7.20. It's literally that short, but I give you 70 minutes, okay? Uh, if you start though at, let's say, 8.30, you come in at 8.30 that day, well, you get a whopping 10 minutes, and then it shuts off. Or it'll say you're going to get a 20% late penalty if you don't turn it off now. Okay? All right. So that's Wednesday, September 15th. Now, word training is then next. It starts the same day of this exam. So you get to start word training on September 15th. But now you're doing a lot of work. Windows 10, remember I said, was based on one training assignment. That's this one training assignment. Now, when you get to Word and then Excel, Access, and PowerPoint, there are tons of things. So for Word, you get from September 15th until October 5th. So you get more or less three weeks, okay? But you've got to do four different training activities. And by the way, cumulatively, that means there's about 150 tasks, 150 tasks. You also have to do three projects. You should do four optional practice exams, one for each module is what it is. So lesson one or module one, module two, three, four, there's a practice exam for each. And then always when you see a due date for your work, September 15th in this case, then, uh, sorry, that's when it starts, but October 15th is the due date. It's always the very next day. So the exam for Word, again, here it says exams. So that's this part. The exam is the next day. It's Wednesday, October 6th. When? Only during live office hours. Starts at 7 a.m. You get 70 minutes for it. So if you started at 7, it's over at 8.10. Most of you would still finish it earlier, but not as fast as Windows 10. Most people probably take 30 to 50 minutes for the Word exam, but you're given 70 minutes, okay? But if you start it again, let's say at 8.20, then you only get 20 minutes, 
and it'll shut off or tell you if you, if it doesn't shut off, you get 20% late penalty if you if you you know keep going. All right. Okay. So and then the same day of the exam, October 6th, that's when Excel training starts. And for that, you get almost four weeks. So that one, three weeks, this one you get about four weeks. And it ends on November the 2nd. It's the same number of lessons, four modules, the same number of projects, three projects, same number of practice exams, four. And then the day after it's due, November 2nd, so the, the exam is the next day, Wednesday the 3rd, the same rules. The only difference is that for the Excel exam, you get, it may not be 80, actually it may be 75. I'm not positive right yet, but I will be. Uh, but you get either 75 or 80 minutes. So you get five or 10 more minutes because it's a harder exam. Okay, and the day of that exam, Wednesday, November 3rd, that's when your training for Access starts. Okay, Access. Microsoft Access is a database application. Uh, the hardest exam by far is Access. Okay, Excel is the second hardest. Word is the third hardest. PowerPoint and Windows 10 are about the same hardness as easiness. So they're the you know hardest, uh, sorry, they're the easiest two exams. So. Hardest access, second hardest Excel, third hardest Word, and then fourth and fifth, you just you, you pick. It's either Windows 10 or it's PowerPoint. They're both easy. Anyway, so you see here is the schedule and it tells you everything. Okay. Now the only time though that you don't get the full, you know, until the day before the exam to do the training and projects is with PowerPoint. And that's because class technically ends, and really it's not the 10th for uh, for December, the last week of class is the sixth and eighth for you guys. That's your two required class days. But I'm letting you work on, on any lessons for PowerPoint up until the 10th. And then your exam, this is called exams week. I've got a lot of uh, seniority. So my exams are always the first day of exams week. And it's a Monday, Wednesday class, which means your exam is Monday, December 13th at 7 a.m. Again, it's due at 8.40 a.m. All right, so that's that. You read that a few times. Okay, so that's the syllabus. Now, students start here. Students start here. This is where you go to register your MindTap access code that you purchased from this link. Okay, so, and you can also purchase it from clicking the link in the syllabus, but anyway. So, students start here. When you guys go to it, all right, let me, I'm in student preview, so watch what happens when I click it. In students preview, um, what it's going to do is bring you to a site. And the site is going to tell you to do one of two things. All right, so let's wait till it pops up and then I'll tell you that. All right, so you're going to click that link. All right, and it's still not quite there yet. It should be bouncing around. Okay, so here it tells you your class. So this is 2171. If you look here, see it's class 2171. All right, and this is saying when you buy your, your access code at the Miami-Dade College bookstore, okay, and I said if you buy it in person, then you bring it home or you bring it to the computer center, one of the labs or the library, and use one of their computers, and you would click this button, enter it now. So you click there and you enter it now. If you don't click there, then you go in here, you click continue. So here is, yes, you've got your access code and you're going to enter it right away, okay? Otherwise, no, you're going to click continue and go here, all right? So if you go here with the continue, it's going to tell you what your options are, okay? You must buy it, by the way. Um, oh, shoot, I've got uh, cookies on because I came to this site earlier. Sorry about that. In your case, it's going to come to tw this link here, this first link, okay? This one will not be there. This is a, the second class I have. So yours will come to this link here, all right? But there will be an option down here to say temporary access. And the, you know, the cost of your book is half that. Well, really, it's $86.75. So I, the book prices are not updated yet. I believe they're $86.75 is what I was told. But this, again, is because there's two things in the shopping cart. You're only going to see this top one. So $82, but I believe really it will be $86.75. Okay? And that's an approximate. But anyway, you could so either enter your access code from the first link where it says enter it now or you click continue and then you're going to request temporary access. If you request temporary access, you'll get either 7 or 14 days depending on what your status is as a student, whether you've had the class before, there's certain rules, but you have to buy it within two weeks and it may be within one week. If you don't, everything you've done 
is gone. It's deleted and I can't get it back for you. So you need to understand access codes are very important. You'll click whichever one and then temporary access if you don't have your access code yet. All right. I'm going to get out of that one. So you click this link here to get that information. All right. And you notice here, I said, if you've not purchased your access, so I want you to purchase it basically, or at least register by the second day of class. Okay. So in your case, it's a Monday and Wednesday class. So the day after that is the end of your first, really the end of your first week is the Wednesday, but I'm letting you go until Thursday. But I want you to either register by buying your code or register by taking a temporary trial access for the code by this date, Thursday the 26th. Okay. Then you register at MindTap with your MyMDC.net email address. Now watch when I exit the preview. Right. So now I'm going to show you what I get. So I click student start here. And let's pretend you've already done this from your own link, right? This is now my, my view over here. So when I click it, I'm going to go straight to the class because, of course, I'm the professor. I've set the class up. So it's going to automatically bring me here. But once you register, the next time you click student start here, you're going to go right here where I just went. It's automatically coming to 2217. That just means fall up this year. And 2171 means that's your, um, your um, reference number. OK, and here you're going to see all the information. I'll review this stuff later, but there's a lot of stuff that you have to do. OK, you have five quizzes in the computer concepts area. You have one training in the operating systems area and it's on Windows 10. You have one exam, but all the dates in here, like you can't just click it now for any of these things. It's all set up based on the rules I have in place for all of those assignments. After Windows 10, then you got Word, but Word, I said there's all different there's four different modules four have uh, trainings practice exams for every module they're optional though that's why they're called practice projects are the most difficult thing you have to do but they're based on the training so you always start with training so that's module one then module two you got the same thing module three you got the same thing and then module four module four you only have training and a practice exam you don't have a, a project in module four and then you have your word final exam the day after all these things are due. Okay. Then you go to Excel. Same thing. Excel module one. I'm not going to review it all. Excel module two. Excel module three. There's just a, everything with the orange filled bubbles. Sorry, I should have mentioned. These are the required. So anything that has orange bubbles are required. Anything like the practice exam, see they don't have an orange bubble. So technically you don't have to do them. But they help you on the real exam, so I suggest that you do them. Okay, so trainings and projects always have orange bubbles. Practice exams do not, and of course your exams have um, your exams have um, have train um, have an orange bubble because of course they're required as well. All right. Okay, so that is that in terms of showing you this part basically. All right. Okay, so then over here again, so purchasing the access code now. So this link here, you either get it again. Remember, this was in the syllabus that I already reviewed, but here there's a, a nice link for it. So for you to do it, you can just click this link here, okay? And when you click that link, and this link I also put in the syllabus, though, it brings you to their, again, the Homestead Campus Bookstore website, and then you just you know, it, it, this price may vary, but it's about that price. And then you just go ahead and it should already have the, um, the class and the, the class reference number. And all you then do is just add it and pay for it. OK, so that's that link. Uh, so the purchase and then the required live Collaborate Ultra sessions are in here. So required live Collaborate Ultra. This is what it looks like. OK. So this is just this class and syllabus overview that I'm doing right now. I'll be saving this as a recording. I am recording this session. And it will either show up afterwards in the recordings link here, or I'll put it in a link in the courses, course videos created by Professor Maloney. I haven't decided yet. If I don't use this one, then I'll just delete it. Uh, but either way, they'll either be there or in the session menu from collaborate ultra in recordings i'll decide before class starts but that's what these are okay but let's close that part down again to show you so this one won't be there 
this is just for me to let me do what I'm doing right now. This is, I'm recording this session here on 817, all right? Okay, so on your live class sessions, it says, see, recurring from 823, that's a Monday, starting at 7 a.m., all the way to December 13th, ending at 8 a.m. That's your required live class sessions. What you do on Monday is you come in here, if you click this link, okay, or you click the, uh, sorry, you click this down arrow, either way, one or the other, you'll then see all the live sessions. See, so the first one is 823 to 823. Then the next one is 825 to 825. The next one's the next Monday, 8.30 to 8.30, then 9.1 to 9.1. You don't see a 9.6 because that's a class holiday, so it goes from 9.1 to 9.8. Um, and then 9.13, 9.15, 9.20, I'll just scroll down. Your final exam is only on PowerPoint, so it's not a final exam per se. But on 12.13, December 13th is when you take your PowerPoint exam. Okay? So then I'll close all them up by just clicking this top link this link okay and now see the next one is is the optional so that's required live class required from seven until eight mondays and wednesdays the next one is optional so at 8 a.m every day i'll then say okay live class is over again except on the days where there's exams but every other day i'll say okay live class is over now i'm going to the optional i'll click this link and then you see all the optionals are now popping up the same things okay all the way until in the case of the optionals, 12-8, because remember I said last week of class is week 16. It's this thing here. It ends on, it's, it includes Monday the 6th and Monday, uh, Wednesday the 8th, okay? So you don't have an optional office hour session on the exams week. That's why this one stops on 12-8. The other one stops on 12-13, all right? And then I get rid of all them. Oh, wait. No, get rid of them and get rid of my optional. Okay, so that's those two links there, all right? So that is that. Now let's go back to your view again. All right, so um, your, that's re uh, required live, the Collaborate Ultra sessions. Then discussion form. This is the only thing you do officially in Blackboard, and you see you click this link here, and then you just create a post. But look at the instructions on the post to make sure you do it right. So you have until... Sunday, the 29th of August, to do it. It's got to have two paragraphs, but each paragraph needs to have four, five, or six sentences. It's due the 29th. You must include your name, your major. Don't say, oh, no major. Say, I haven't come up with a major yet. I'm thinking about blah, 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 or blah, blah, blah. What do you like to do? Tell me something. What do you see yourself doing in five years? Don't say, I have no idea. Say, you know, I'm thinking about it. I might move to Toronto, Ontario. I'm Canadian, by the way. So, or I might move to Vancouver, British Columbia. Might move to Montreal, Quebec. You know, say whatever you want to say. You or you might be living in uh, Cutler Bay or Kendall or Homestead or Miami or whatever. Anyway, and then where you see yourself living. Anything else needed to make sure that you give me two full paragraphs? Okay. Then you must also say hello to at least one other student, meaning reply to one other student's post and ask him or her a question to get full credit for this. And you still have to also include your picture since this is an MDC live class. So I want to see your picture in your post. All right. The other one, this I said, you guys, if you want to just make posts for yourselves, you can click students working together. No requirements. You don't have to participate. You can make a post if you want, or you don't have to, all right? Okay, so that is, let's see, discussion forms. Then the library, I said you can get um, Office 365 for free. So if you click on the MDC library link, sorry, right here, MDC library, it'll open a new page here, and this is our library. You would then click Office 365 Student Advantage, okay? And then you just read, Wow, it is free. No extra cost. Wow. Tells you what you get. Tells you how to do it. You go to this link here. You log in with your mymdc.net email address. Has to be that email. Okay. And then just follow the instructions. If you have a Windows PC, you get these things. If you have a Mac, you don't get as much. But for this class, you get Word in both. You get Excel in both. You get PowerPoint in both. The other thing we teach is access. You get access in the PC version, but you don't get it in the Mac. 
So that might that that's why we don't do projects for you know when we're doing MDC Live, we're not requiring projects on Microsoft Access only. Okay, you might say, yeah, but if I got a Mac, how am I doing Word, Excel, PowerPoint, whatever? Well, you're doing it if you download the software. But when you're working on the MindTap site, that site that I'm no longer on, I close it down. Um, when you click on a training, it runs in a pop-up machine. Watch. Let me get over here again. Get out of your preview. Go back to mine. Go to student start here. Again, this is what you do, remember. But once you've purchased it, you still come in the same way. I'll probably just rename the link then to go here for your mind tap assignments. So mine, remember, and yours once you're registered will come over here and you'll be in mind tap. So let's say I want to just start word training. Okay. So here's word training one, let's say. I click that I want to start the training. So if I click it, first it'll bring me to a window telling me I should check my system. My system's already been checked. Everything's good, but you might want to make sure it works fine. And then I'll say start. And you see this thing here? This is called a pop-up, all right? So you need to allow pop-ups in MindTap. So you, I have a link over here to enabling pop-ups, right? So if you don't understand how to enable a pop-up in Safari or Firefox or Google Chrome, or Microsoft Edge, whichever browser you're using, then you can just go Google it, obviously. Just go in and type, how do I enable pop-ups? But you can also do it this way if you want to, all right? Okay, so that's that. But then when you are in the pop-up, once you allow them, then this is where you're doing your trainings. So you're not actually on Windows 10, but this thing here is in Windows 10. And for this particular case, sorry, I'm now in, I open Word, not Windows 10 training. Um, this is using Office 365, okay? So if you're using Office uh, 2013 or 2016 or 2010 or, you know, one of those older ones, then you're not going to have the same features. So it will be different on the projects. And the projects are very, they're, again, the higher graded things, higher weighted things. So make sure you download the software from the um, library link, okay? And then all this is is telling you what you do. This is trainings. And remember I said there's three modes. Apply is the one you have to do. That's why I make it the default. So this blue background means it's the one that pops up first. So create a new blank document. Well, easy way to do it. You just click on your start. But see, you're not on your computer. Start over here. You're in this one. Okay, and so if you click your start, where the heck am I? What's going on here? Oh, all right. So create a new blank document. In this case, they already have Word up. So if I click it, say try again, maybe the other one wasn't awake, still not awake. Let's see, word. Interesting. All right. Maybe my machine. Remember I told you how to look at your machine or whether it's running well? So in here, in here, mine says it's running excellent. But anyway, I don't know that it is. So um, where am I? So go back here again, and then you can just follow along, though. So you either open a new document, and that's a new blank document. So behind here, it tells me that. So if I click this, it's going to say you've completed it, and then it'll move me to the next exercise. Start Word 2019. Well, that says the same darn thing the other one did, right? Except this one says start it. So to start it, let's see if we can come over here. So now it's this start menu over here is allowing me to come in. So I can click Word here or I can click Word from my scroll down, where it shows Word this way, okay? So it's the same thing, whichever one you wanna do. But let's say I, I, I get it wrong. Like, let's pretend it's really your training. So if I click on Edge, well, Edge is wrong. That's not Microsoft Word, so it's no good. If I click on Calendar, it's no good. If I click on um, Photos, no good, right? So you can click a thousand times, literally, okay, and get it wrong as long as eventually you get it right. But you can also go to observe or practice. And I'm gonna do a video demonstrating this stuff, so I'm not gonna carry it on anymore here. So I'm gonna just get out of there, okay? Go back here. All right, and go back to your view one last time. So that is discussion forums, the library, and then there's tutoring. So sometimes students need help on things, okay? Um, in this class, remember, I, your professor will help you on training only. Training. That's what you're supposed to get help on training. 
Projects are called independent projects or independent assignments. And what are they based on? They're based on the training. So as long as you do all your required training assignments, let me get out of this thing for now. If you do all your required training assignments on MindTap, meaning the four modules, then you go in and you start project one and then project for module two and then project for module three. You've already done the training. It'll be easier then. But you can also go in and Google. How do I insert a style in Word? Or you know, you just Google whatever you want to. All right, um, but that's up to you. All right. So anyway, um, the next one though is yeah, tutoring. So on tutoring, if you click that link, then it brings you basically back over here to learning resources, which is your library. You click your link. Uh, you know, Homestead. Uh, if some of you are not Homestead students, click whichever campus you're in. So if I click on Homestead, and then the training or tutoring is for CGS. So I would click this. You guys can do that if you want to get help on a project, okay? They won't do it for you. They'll tell you, Professor Maloney said that there were four training modules, so you show me what you know, and I'll then decide what I can, where I can direct you, and they'll probably just direct you back to the training, okay? But anyway, you can set it up online, meaning just scheduling a, a Zoom session or a MS team session with a with a um, teaching assistant in the Homestead campus learning resources area or you can come into the library and go up to the person in the middle of the library and say you know like a work desk and say hey can I how where do I go to get help on CGS 1060 I was told that there's a tutoring section there's two students that are TAs for that or, or tutors however you want to call them so there's two of them that are there sometimes they work online sometimes they work in person all right so that is that now what else is over here then if you have trouble well so enabling pop-ups I already told you mind tap technical support if you're having issues so you don't call me to say professor I can't get into mind tap you call over here and there's a phone number in here they'll most likely say please make a case but if you push it, they'll answer the phone. It's 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, and um, they'll help you to the extent they can. All right? So that is it for this session. I hope you had a, I hope you learned a lot. Remember, you can watch this video over and over again if you need to. But for now, I'm signing out. Have a great day. And